and welcome to a new video. After seeing the great response of our previous one, what is money laundering? We thought that it would only be fair that we make another one to show the top five biggest money laundering finds in history. So let's move directly towards the video. But before that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Now let's get started with the five biggest AML finds in history. Kicking off at number five, Bank of Credit and Commerce International, BCCI. The first on the list is BCCI, which was founded in Luxembourg by Aga Hassan Abedi, a Pakistani businessman in 1972. The bank grew remarkably quickly and by the early 1980s, BCCI became one of the largest banks in the world. The HQ was in Belgium, but the bank operated globally and the main source of funding was from Abu Dhabi. Well, the trouble started in 1988 when the bank was accused of money laundering. Following an investigation by Pricewaterhouse, allegations arose in 1990 that the BCCI was falsifying transactions. Large unrecorded deposits were being made to the bank. In further investigations, it was revealed that the BCCI was involved in a vast number of crimes, including arms dealing, prostitution, and laundering money for famous criminal figures such as Saddam Hussein. BCCI and its customers had committed fraud and money laundering of 17.6 billion pounds. Set of complex mechanisms were used to hide their conduct mostly using shell companies, secrecy and layered corporate structures, and of course, the connections. Yet the bank was closed in 1991 and liquidated. It still owned over £10 billion to its creditors. The money had seemingly evaporated. However, the case has never been resolved and the missing money has never been recovered. Moving swiftly on to number four, Nauru. It is incredibly rare that an entire nation to be redesigned a money launderer. But happened to Nauru, the smallest island nation in the world. The island was an important source of phosphate mining. Resultantly, Nauru received a lot of money from Australia, from the mining, thus becoming one of the wealthiest nations in the world. Unfortunately, the money was used by an incompetent and corrupt government with the craziest schemes. So when the phosphate reserves were depleted, Nauru transformed itself into an offshore banking paradise and tax haven, with a no questions asked attitude towards registration of offshore banking institutions and their customers. It's estimated that at least $70 billion in Russian mob money flowed through Nauru in a single year. Besides Russia, even Al Qaeda took an interest and began laundering money through shell banks. So, in 2002, the US Treasury and Financial Crimes Enforcement Network designated Nauru a money laundering state and introduced sanctions that were harsher than those imposed on Iraq and Iran. The sanctions were lifted in 2005 when the island abolished its 400 shell banks, introduced AML and tax haven laws with help of the Financial Actions Task Force, which then removed the nation from its blacklist. Number three, Dansk Bank. In the beginning, Dansk Bank was Denmark's largest lender with a good reputation on the international market. Trouble started in the Baltics in 2007, when Dansk Bank took over Sambo Bank, including its Estonian branch. The region's proximity to Russia had traditionally made them vulnerable to illegal financial flows from their neighbor. Just a few months after the takeover, Estonia's financial minister raised concerns and the bank received warnings from Russia's central bank about the Estonian branch being used for suspicious transactions worth billions of dollars. The warnings were ignored by the Estonian and Danish supervisors and they continued to accept these deposits coming from non-residents with little intervention. Finally, in 2015, Danks Bank shut down the non-resident portfolio. The world started paying attention in 2017 and Danks Bank was forced to stop its business in Estonia. Several executives were charged and the bank was fined 12.5 million Danish crowns by the Danish authorities for violating anti-money laundering rules concerning the monitoring of transactions to and from correspondent banks. 
Rolling in at number two, Standard Chartered Bank. The Standard Chartered Bank based in the UK has officially been around since 1969. Its problem started in 2004 after it got into trouble with the Federal Reserve Board and the New York State Banking Department because of its lack of AML practices and policies. It agreed to sign a written agreement with them that addressed AML compliance issues at the bank's New York branch. However, the bank did not adhere to this agreement and in 2012 it was accused of breaking sanctions against Iran for helping the Iranian government to circumvent US money laundering regulations, for which the bank received a fine of $670 million. In April 2019, the Financial Conduct Authority issued its second largest ever fine to Standard Chartered Bank, £102,163,200, for AML breaches failure to implement AML practices and ignoring sanctions against Burma, Zimbabwe, Iran, Cuba, Sudan and Syria. Despite the astronomical amount, CSB most likely did not face substantial difficulties regarding the payment. The penalty was anticipated and the CSB announced in February it had set aside $900 million to cover the US and UK penalties. And topping our board at number one, Wachovia Bank. Wachovia Bank was one of the largest banks in the US before it was purchased by Wells Fargo during the 2008 financial crisis. In 2004, Wachovia was conducting business with Casel del Cambios in Mexico. CDCs are currency exchange houses where one can bring cash, send it to a bank account and exchange the currency. CDCs were flagged as being risky financial institutions, but while other banks were slowly distancing themselves from them, Wachovia was deepening its involvement in CDCs. Martin Woods, who joined Wachovia as a money laundering reporting officer in 2005, started getting suspicious. He filed suspicious activity reports and the involvement of Mexican drug cartels, but was snubbed by Wachovia. The real investigation started with a major drugs bust in 2006, where a DC-9 was intercepted in the Gulf of Mexico and found to be loaded with 5.7 tonnes of cocaine. The Drug Enforcement Agency discovered that Mexican cartels were smuggling US dollars gained from selling illegal drugs in America across the Mexican border. These investigations led to Wachovia and it was revealed that the money was given to the CDCs who deposited it into the Mexican bank accounts. The banks did not investigate the origins of the money, which allowed these illegal earnings to enter the legitimate sector. The origins of the money were not checked, thus the criminals were able to integrate illegal funds into the financial system. However, even though the amount of money laundered through Wachovia throughout the whole scheme was between $350 to $380 billion, Wachovia managed to get away with the whole thing, settling the case by paying a $160 million fine and promising to increase its AML procedures. Whereas later, Wachovia was bought by San Francisco-based Wells Fargo in 2008 to create the most extensive distribution system for financial services in North America. So, there you have it, our top five AML finds in history. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and smash the bell icon.